All right. Good morning, everyone. We are live. Let's see the chat. Um, Marina. Hi, Marina. Hey, West. How you guys going? Evening. Hey, Comics Legend. How you doing? Alrighty. Just um, I lost I lost that reference I had here. Ah, never mind. Alrighty. Cool. So um, we're gonna continue working today on the on the guitar. <laughs> um, again, it's um, I just choose this object because uh, I could show you different techniques. Uh, that's what we did last last time, last session. Uh, we went through a few different ways to create the same thing, really. Uh, so that's why we didn't <laughs> um, progress too much. Uh, one thing I did after the stream, by the way. I just gave this slight um, curvature here, so it's not like when we finished the stream. This was like straight here, so I just uh, rounded it using the um, the Gizmo 3D, just pushing some of those points in there. But that's uh, that's about it. And I have dynamic subdivision for both. This is the one that we did. I think I can't remember what the what was the yeah, I can't remember what we did or or what uh, process we used to create this one, but it was one of the ones that I showed you last time. Anyway, um, so we're today we're gonna continue working on kind of like the um, the headstock type of thing for the for the guitar, doing the the pegs, the tuning pegs, and um, the the caps pan, I think it's called the caps caps stand or something. Um, the little string thingy. <laughs> so we're going to do all of that. Um, love, to, love the brushes you were showing of the, of the weekend. Um, of, oh, the ones that I put online. Yeah, so I'm working on something pretty cool. I'm hoping to, to have it ready. Um, soon the thing is I'm working on like like five or six projects um, plus all the the freelance that I'm doing um, but it's I'll, I'll show you what it is just so that we are all in the same page so I, I'm thinking you're referring to this one yeah so um, yeah I'm working on some some brushes for skin detailing like micro pores and you know micro you know um, Expression wrinkles or expression lines, that sort of thing. Um, I'm, I'm using some fantastic references, so I'm just like really kind of like trying to study it. Um, I think if I'm just going to show you because it's pretty cool. So there's a thing called uh, Gigapan. I'll put it here. From I mean, the Gigapan technology is not the is not the, the the cool thing. I mean, it's the photographs from Daniel Daniel Boshung. Here we go. Right. So, can you guys see that? Yeah. So, have a look at this. So, this is what I'm doing to sort of like study and and trying to replicate because all the all the things that I'm doing for the brushes are kind of like hand sculpted. So, that's part of like what I what I'm doing for myself to study it, but um, I'm using these as a, as a reference and they're absolutely fantastic. So uh, check this guy out, Daniel Boschung. I don't know if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but Boschung. Um, and if you click on these images, look at this. So it's like the resolution, I think is 900 megapixels or something like that, right? So I'm just like to study, let's say the, the pores here on the chin, I'm just going this this close and you can see the level of detail is absolutely 
crazy. So even like between the pores, you know, that the, the form the, the deformation of these kind of like star lines going across the imperfections of some of the pores. Right? It's it's crazy. <laughs> so um yeah this is the one that I'm using to you know figure out like the, the direction of the pores and you know the difference between you know the wrinkles here for the eye and and the flow anyway that doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing today but i just thought i'd show you because it's pretty cool all right <laughs> netsumi hey man how you doing the yeah the string thingy that's that's exactly what we do, <laughs> we're not gonna do Alrighty, so um, I think, yeah, let's do the, the headstock thing. Um, and that's gonna be kind of like to complete the, the silhouette and the rest are just details. We do the strings, we do the, um, what's the name now? <laughs> the knot thing here at the top. And I always forget the name in, in English. Uh, what's the name of the, Anyway, the, the dividers, the frets, the fret, fret, something like that. <laughs> All right. So uh, to do that, I'm just going to start with a cube. So we can just duplicate any of these and send it to a Q cube. Turn off dynamic, center, push it up. So I'm going to start this one in the same way that I start pretty much anything just with the simplest form to determine the, the thickness and to um, you know the thickness the, the size in general and I think that's about it I have a I have a reference but it's not the best <laughs> but just to sort of get the proportions It's probably something like that. All right, and the thickness we'll we'll play around with that and the and the width as well. Just want to have some something to to start with. Right, so that's just a simple cube. Uh, but we need to figure out how to you know um, how to approach again. The the idea with this object is to show different options, but um, we need to figure out how to approach the you know the, the holes in the middle um the the space in between and the the curvature of it so all of these are things that we can either do for example with the with the booleans and then do a remesh or actually sculpt it manually and then again do a remesh so um, i'm just gonna keep it simple and it's going to slow mode and i'm going to use the c modeler just to add a few more points so Oops, right click, insert, multi edge loop, click and drag. I'm gonna do that uh, four times, maybe five, and then do the same thing here. And then we can right click in this one, go to, oops, go to bevel and bevel that one. Something like that. And remember, this is quite thin. This is gonna, you know, be a little bit wider. Um, but what we can do is maybe do that straight away. So it's going to mask this out, invert the mask, and scale it like so. So it's roughly the, the thickness that, that I'm going for. And for the most part, the, the thickness or the width of this um, head span is almost uh, consistent. The thing is, this thing is going to be, oops, kind of like that. <laughs> no, not that exaggerated, but something like that. So we'll do that afterwards. Okay, clear the mask. And of course, we can double check with the dynamic subdivision. Uh, but again, the idea is to, to set up the or block this first, and then we'll figure out the how to how to how to do the rest. Um, and this is this might not be the the final uh, topology. I mean, we can try to keep it clean from the beginning. But um, that's one of the things that I would suggest is don't worry too much about, you know, how clean the topology is. And if you if you cannot figure out the, the flow or the right flow, um, don't worry about that. It's just a matter of, you know, if it doesn't work, you can 
bring in Sculptris Pro, tweak something here, and then do a Siri mesh. It doesn't really matter. Um, to create the, that kind of stuff, definitely should be should be use Studio Studio, Studio Max. Um, sure, if that's what you feel comfortable with, that is definitely an option. Okay, so I think I'm gonna keep it simple for now. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do this one again. Um, let's see. I'm gonna work on the left hand side and then I'm gonna mirror this. So I'm gonna use the Alt key to tag all of this and the same thing for the other side. Right, and probably you know already uh, what I'm going for. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna click on inset, right click on a face, um, click on inset and polygroup all. Doesn't really matter what target we choose really because um, we pretty much targeted the, the polygons that we're going to use. So I'm going to click on this one and oops, I'm going to right click and I'm going to turn off uh, equidistant. So this is a, the new default equidistant. I'm going to choose standard so that it doesn't generate any triangles. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're going to read the, uh, gonna, we're going to get rid of the center line or the center piece, right? Something like that. I mean, Maybe, you know what? Um, this is one of my favorite new things about the Simola that if I wanna change something from the selection, I can just hold the Alt key and then remove that from the selection. So probably something like that. Yeah, that makes more sense, I think. Um, then what we can do is right click on the, on the face again. I'm gonna go for mask, polygroup all. So it's gonna select all the polygroups. I'm gonna click on that. And because we have the same polygroup, it's gonna be automatically masked, right? So I'm gonna push this one closer here, just slightly. Again, I'm not worried about like the flow, the topology, we're gonna to get rid of that center part anyway. Um, and then I can just take, let's say Q mesh, Q mesh, Polygroup all. I'm gonna tag the front, and remember we've been working on the other side as well. So um, they they're basically sitting on the same space, and because I'm using the Q mesh, I can click and drag, and then just create that sort of bridge, which is great. And then we can maybe adjust these points a little bit. Just again try to keep it clean in a way, right? Um, if we do the dyna dynamic. I mean, it's super, super soft at this moment, but um, you can see where I'm going with this. All right, and of course, we wanna have this in both sides, uh, but before I do that, I just wanna create another line in the middle. So I'm just gonna mask this one, invert that and push it slightly. Again, just try to keep the, um, when, I, when I talk about clean topology, and flow and all of that. Um, what I'm trying to keep an eye on is in the in the proportion of each one of the the faces and the and the polygons that I do. So if I see something that is stretching too much compared with something that is pretty tiny, that's what I'm trying to to balance out. All right, something like that, and maybe push this slightly to the left. Okay, so basically what I've done is I moved that center line, like I offset it to, towards my left, right? Or the left of the screen. Um, and that allows me to, al well, give us some space here to create a new center line when I do a mirror and weld. So if I click mirror and weld, you see it just adds that extra line in the middle. And then um, that's what I wanted to have so that it doesn't create a, a weird point right in the middle. I don't know if that makes sense. But now we have that that sort of shape that we're gonna go for. All right. And then of course we can start tweaking this and 
give it adjust the the shape of it and that's what we're going to do with the move brush so this is something that i mentioned that i showed um, on the last stream if i can use the move brush to do these sort of things but uh, we're going to start this sorting the thickness of it so you can do two things you can work on a single sided mesh so basically delete whatever is behind it right and then play around with symmetry uh, sorry, with um, perspective of use the move brush blah 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 and then extrude the rest but we can also use in the depth we can use infinite depth on the z-axis right so I can move this and you see it just it's kind of like a it's shooting the effect through the entire um, axis in a way all right so for that I'm gonna see if I have a no I have like two images <laughs> for reference okay so I'm gonna use the move brush to adjust the the shape of this and I'm gonna also um, lock the camera so that I, I don't move it accidentally and also enable symmetry and I'm gonna do something like that now remember that these things that I'm doing although I'm distorting the topology the idea is to keep things clean but this is not gonna be my final topology anyway I just want to do something that gives me the the starting point and then I can create a you know run a C modeler to to adjust this and of course this is light um, you know this is gonna be slightly bent like that right um, but I think I'm not gonna do that just yet I want to keep um, well you know what we can yeah, we could potentially do it. I'm just keep. I'm just thinking in advance because um, then we can combine everything and use the transpose master and just uh, bring in something like the the taper deformer oh, without symmetry, obviously, and do this sort of thing, and then just tweak it. So that's just an easy way to go about it. But I want to keep the. Let's click on delete. I want to keep this straight so that I can put in um, the rest of the, the thingies. <laughs> okay, dynamic. Okay, that's that's better. I'm going to add a line in here. Just, uh, yeah. And maybe another one in there. Go back to the move brush. And I'm just going to adjust these points. I'm gonna add a little bit more of a uh, of details here, so you can bevel this this edge as well, this one as well, just to add curvature to that. And you'll see that at this point, I sort of like lost that sort of clean. I mean, this is still a, a clean topology; it's just not very well distributed. Um, but again, I'm not too worried about this. right and then I don't have this in my reference uh, but in my in my actual guitar um, I have this thing so I don't know if that's gonna make sense but I'm gonna turn off the infinite depth so there is kind of like a, a curvature here let me just see if I can just do it I'm gonna mask the front maybe the back as well just push these ones up I don't know if this is gonna show what I'm trying to show or if it's gonna make sense but it's kind of like um, yeah it looks like this basically 
at the at the bottom but we can potentially do it at the top as well now nah, let's just do it at the bottom and again uh, I'm doing this with the move brush if you wanted to you know keep everything super straight and and perfect uh, by all means you can just keep using the C model but the idea is to show you a few things right uh, let's have a look at the chat um, no worries glad that you find it's useful well how goes hello from Paris hello how do you transfer from learn CBrush to another I'm not entirely sure if I get the question right how do you transfer what you learn from CBrush to another software maybe just correct me if I'm wrong um, all right so if I have that and use dynamic you see there's a slight tilt in there um, but that's that's pretty much what I need to do a Siri measure and and get something going. In fact, I'm gonna add a few more things here. Maybe not that many. Or yeah, I don't know. All right, just some more, more points in there so that I can use the infinite depth again and tweak I tweak a little bit that that top part just because I want to get a um, kind of like um this type of shape yeah there we go this is what I wanted so again this is kind of like a sketch now um, it's not clean topology I mean it is still pretty decent but it's not the best topology um, the Siri measure could figure this out in a much better way uh, so what I can do as well is I want to crease some edges and give some polygroups or just give some polygroups should be enough so in solo mode let's do a quick save as well um, I'm gonna duplicate this just in case Put this one here into my original folder um, we can use something like the polygroup by normal so I can click on group by normals and that should give me polygroups straight away or pretty decent set of polygroups right and just thinking maybe I want a different polygroup here so what I'll do now, like the next step after doing this, uh, which works really well with for this type of objects that have very clear planes, is to add, assign different polygroups, uh, especially when you want to have a very sharp corner that 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 you want the simola to the sorry the Siri measure to respect. So in this case, I'm gonna tag these ones, right click, polygroup. So now I have another polygroup here. Uh, basically, now when I run the Siri measure. Uh, as soon as Sirush encounters a difference between polygroup, like in this curvature here, and then this one, and this one, and then this flat um, polygons, is going to try to maintain that that sharp line and keep those polygroups. And we're gonna we're gonna get to that in just a second. So that's what I'm gonna try to do for this thing. So this curvature as well. So that is difference between this, this, and this. The front and back is fine. These polygroups here are fine as well. And let's try adding a polygroup there. See how we go. And again, this is the, the great part about the uh, the Siri meshing process that if it doesn't work, you just undo, try something else and until it works. So Siri mesh, uh, I have everything here on, on the bottom, but I'm just gonna show you from here. Um, right, just another thing that I might want to do, I'm going to duplicate this just in case. So uh, I'm going to try to keep the same amount of, or actually let's go for double the polygons and then we can just clean it up a little bit. Uh, I want to keep the groups, that's what is going to tell Sivrush that we want to um, yeah, maintain the polygroups and 
is going to maintain that sharpness between the groups. I want to have zero smoothing of the groups. And we can detect edges. We can keep creasing, but we don't have any. So let's just go with these settings as it is and do a zero measure of that. Pretty decent. Let's do another one. Hang on. I'm going to change from double to same. So Siri is going to try to maintain the same amount of uh, polygons, but give me a different distribution. No, that's not good. All right, so let me undo that. Right click, crease, complete. So I'm going to crease some edges here. I'm going to crease all of this. Oops. So those ones and these borders as well. Crease partial. So basically the same thing that I'm doing um, with the polygroups, we can do it with the creasing of the edges. So if I go to dynamic, you'll see what the creasing is doing. It's maintaining those. Actually, that, that is not too bad, but we'll try to we'll try to improve it. Um, these ones shouldn't be. All right, let's double check. You know what? That's not too bad, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well, we'll try the serial measure anyway, but uh, that's not too bad. I'm gonna actually delete this one and duplicate that one that I like. And let's try the serial measure again. Oops, uh, detect creases or keep creases. Gonna go for double. I'm just, I just have a feeling that. that it might be better if I just do the legacy. Yeah, for um, for this type of more organic, I mean, it is a hard surface type of thing, but for more organic shapes like these ones at the top, the legacy algorithm of the serial mesh might be better. So we can try that. And then run this again. There we go. Yeah, so it's kind of like a jump in between these two. Um, to get the clean topology that you want. And then we can, I don't know if we can reconstruct this. No, we can't, but we can simplify it. So we can go to half. So this is something that I usually uh, do when the first, uh, when I try to reduce the geometry and the first option or the first result doesn't give me what I want, I just go through a double the amount or, or a high resolution and do the serial measure on a higher resolution so that ZBrush has enough points to figure out the volumes and everything and then I'll bring it back to, to something like this. Let's try it one more time. No, that's not too good. Um, but that one, that one is pretty, pretty decent. So let's go to dynamic. Yeah, even without creasing any, any edges, you can sort of tell, right? And of course, at this point, we can go ahead and use the move brush. I think I still have yep, infinite depth. And I'm just going to tweak this a little bit with symmetry. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and compare these two and see which one I'm actually gonna go for, because um, I feel this this gap is a little bit too it's too big. Not not the gap, but like this thing in the middle. Just wanna. Do a quick test. Just 
just to add it some add some curvature there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn dynamic for for both. Get out of solo mode, and I'm just gonna do a quick test. Did I enable? Yeah, dynamic. Okay, this one has decreasing. Um, I think I like the the original. It's not too bad in terms of of topology, and I can just work with that. So yeah, let's undo that. Keep that one anyway. <laughs> let's keep working with this one. So this is just the the one that we generated at the beginning. We can go ahead and enable. It's already enabled there. And with the dynamic enable, we can tweak these these points. Actually, without dynamic would be better, so we can have a, a real sense of the distribution that we that we're creating. So really, all I'm doing is to get something a bit, you know, more decent in the distribution that I mentioned. Uh, I'll check the chat in just a second. I see some activity there. But I want to move a little bit faster so that we can get to some of the other more, slightly more complex stuff. And the great thing about this uh, infinite depth is that as I move these points, I'm also moving the ones at the back. So I maintain that consistency. Uh, let's do the same thing very quickly here at the, at the bottom. Alright, so dynamic. And if we wanted to make this um, I, I feel like these are too thin. Uh, something we can do is hold Control and Shift to hide these polygroups. Again, again, let's hide everything but what we need, which is that part. Okay, we have same polygroups here, so I'm just going to hold the Control and Shift to isolate this, and I'm going to give them a single polygroup, and then I can use the C modeler. I can right click, and I can use the Q mesh. I want to click, and then hold Shift, and it's just going to scale them in that fashion. Um, of course, now we I mentioned that I wanted to make this uh, thinner, so we can right click those as well. Go to Mask. Polygroup, so I can mask the polygroups, invert that, and push this. Whoops. Center, push this one closer, like so. So I'm just trying to maintain a slightly more consistent thickness. So I want the the middle part to be just a little bit thicker than these these sides. Um, and also, I'm gonna right click on the edge here, insert. I'm going to add a couple of loops. And I don't want them to be creased, so hold the Alt key. Don't know if you knew this one, but you can hold the Alt key uh, with the crease selected, and that's going to uncrease those edges. Right, so I think that's looking good. I'm going to insert a couple more of edge loops just to, to wrap this one up. And this one here. Now I feel that they might have gone with what we what just, um, with the action that we just did of scaling this, uh, we distorted a little bit of these faces, but again, it's, it's a pretty simple thing to do. We can just Hang on. Select the similar, right click, mask uh, polygroup all. So I'm going to click on this polygroup, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo centered, and then I can just scale it in the z axis. 
right? So it's flat. So all of these things, I mean, I'm going a bit slowly in here, just trying to figure out ways to to show you different <laughs> options. But um, again, once you get used to it and, and you sort of like know what are the tools that you can use, this is actually pretty, it's, it's a pretty fast thing to do. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. Now, if you wanted to actually make the, the holes for the um, for the tuning pegs and what's the name? I already forgot. Anyway, the, the, the thing is that go the tubes. Um, you could actually, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm not going to do it for this one because you won't really see it. But um, if you wanted to do it, I'm going to right click, delete edge loop. I'm going to delete these edge loops and I want to create one more. Insert. <clears throat> Chris, all right. So I want to show you what to um, what you can do. Um, we'll have a look at the chat. Hang on. Um, have you ever worked on the video in the video game industry? Um, yes and no. So, uh, basically, yes. I've done freelance stuff for. Uh, things that gonna end up in a video game, but not necessarily in a in a uh, AAA game or, or or game studio. So yes, I know in that sense. Um, general series questions I noticed by default my series is not using all cores, leaving one unused. And wonder if you're using an available core. You have used. I have no idea to be honest. I I rarely worry about those things unless I figure out that it's just getting sluggish or something like that. And I have no issues whatsoever, um, except when I'm streaming. So, I'm, you know, it, it is bec or when I'm using OBS actually. So that's the only thing. Is there a need for correct apology? Even though it won't be animated, but it looks it apologies looks good. Yeah, it's uh, I think in that sense, if it's not going to be animated or uh, or anything like that, it's uh, as long as it looks looks good, um, and that's the idea with the clean topology like if it looks if you sort of dot subdivide it right and it looks correct it doesn't have like any artifacts it's probably a good topology a good topology in, in reality is just something that um it will display i mean it, it really depends on on whether it's going to be animated or not but if, if it just displays the way that um the things that the way that you want to um just yeah that's a good topology i guess if you're sculpting 3D characters or alien or any kind of dinosaur stuff, so it's best. So it's best, but if you're creating, I know you like dark modeling a car will consume a lot of times. Um, oh, you're referring to this? Not really. I mean, again, it's just getting used to the tool. All right, cool. So I forgot what we were doing. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna show you like the the holes. Uh, so you could potentially just right click on a on a face or sorry on a point and go to split, right? And let's say you're gonna do six of them. So you can click and drag to create that hole there, and Sirius will remember the the settings. So you can just click and click, right? For example, and then do the same thing inside these things. Click 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 and click 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 uh, of course I'm not gonna do this one but you can do that and then use the uh, where is it Q mesh click and drag whoops I'm gonna tag this with alt There you go. So that's just one way to do it. Stone dynamic, obviously here at the bottom is kind of like crooked, but that that's going to give you that kind of like the, the holes. Um, again, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> you won't see it anyway. 
but if you want to do it like a perfect or you know super accurate you can go ahead and do that all right so let's move a little bit faster because that's taking us a while to produce this um, we can tweak the, the the connection between these two things in, in a second all right so um, let's go ahead and work on maybe some of the the frets and and the strings and maybe the bridge and all of that just to complete uh, kind of like the pieces of the guitar and then we come back to the more complex things if we have time but I reckon we will hang on let me just see you yeah, dynamic Just gonna go ahead and add a couple of loops here, or bevel this actually. Just trying to get something sharper here with a dynamic. All right, so that's looking alright. Uh, let's go ahead and move on and do. Uh, the frets. So I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that are pretty cool. So I want to show you two things. Uh, hang on. I was wondering if it's possible to apply to become a pixel streamer. Um, I guess I, I, I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, you can contact them, uh, Pixel Logic, and, and ask. But I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't apply. I was just because I was sharing content and stuff like that. Um, I already had shown like the the way that I sort of shared the the, the streams and all of that. Um, they um, they get in, in, in they got in touch and then we talked about it. Hey, Mr. Spicer, McLeroy, glad you like it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Are there any? Throwbacks uh, of for running Zbrush in administrator mode. I was expecting a crash. And, oh, if you're yeah, any any technical questions, I'm not the person to ask in terms of like um, cores and what Zbrush uses and all of that. I, I know kind of like the basic stuff, but I'm not you know I'm not really into that, <laughs> so I don't know much about it. All right, so let's do the bridge of the guitar. I'm just gonna uh, append something. Doesn't have to be anything because I'm going to turn it into a Q-Cube. And again, do the same thing. Start with a very clean, actually for the bridge of the guitar. Let's convert this into a sphere, simple sphere. Just because it's, the sphere is going to give me that, um, that curvature. Oh, I was going to show you the, the fret thing. Well, I'll, I'm going to do the, the bridge first. See modeler. Right click, bevel, and just do that. And then what I'll do is this is kind of like converting this into a super simple cylinder. I wanna, uh, without symmetry, I'm gonna flatten this like that. All right, so it's kind of like a cylinder out of that um, sphere. And then I can mirror and well, and I have that center line. So I just very quickly convert that into a cylinder. You can, of course, start with a cylinder from from the beginning, but um, this is just a, another simple way to do it. And I'm used to do it, and, and I can do it pretty easy. So I'm going to clean or delete edge loop complete. So I'm going to delete that and that. So now this is a pretty clean geometry again. Uh, we can scale, oops, centered, scale that in the x axis. Like so. And what I'll do is take this, flatten it like that. Maybe scale it down a little bit. And then push this back. Um, in fact, now that I think about it, let's go ahead and undo that. Um, just to avoid getting like weird intersections, I'm just gonna 
going to symmetry, tag this, delete. So now we don't have any of those um, polygons. And then we can do now what I just mentioned. Just to flatten that area here. Again, there's so many different ways to do the same thing. All right, and then we can just fill this uh, close convex hole, click and drag. That's probably good enough. Or if we wanna, again, if you wanna keep it clean, we can delete these ones and then just bridge this. Bridge edges, I'm gonna bridge this with this. You know, so we could have done this as well with a, with a cube and, and just move these edges, so it's like, I'm just showing you a more complicated way to do it. But um, yeah, just to give you ideas. So this is gonna be the base of the bridge. That is slightly rounded, right? And also, before I do anything else, I just wanna try dynamic and add a, an insert, a single loop here towards the border, right? Yeah, so that looks that looks all right in dynamic. Um, I wanna remove that border. I just wanted to see how it looked. All right, so for this thing, actually it should be more like that. Um, there are two things happening here. Again, I don't know the the technical names for this, but there's one part that is rounded and another part that is kind of like flat, where the the strings are attached to or or wrapped around, right? Um, hey Duke Pablo, how you doing, man? Uh, we're just continuing with the with the guitar. I'm just currently working on the bridge of it, uh, so. I'm just thinking that I can just divide this just to add a bit more geometry. Okay. Now, hang on. Let's let's think what would be the the best way. I might combine them. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna duplicate this and just keep it separate. So this is gonna be one of them. The again, I don't know the technical name for it. But that's gonna be one of them. So this is kind of like where the where the strings rest on, in a way. And then I'm gonna do another one that is more flat, and that's where you wrap around the the strings. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna duplicate that one. You could just extrude that from the, the original we did, but hopefully this is gonna make sense <laughs> when I finish. Okay, and I'm gonna flatten this one just by using the masking tools. So mask this, invert. Push it down. going to solo mode. Again, this could have been just um, a cube, but you know, we can reuse the same thing. That's roughly the pieces that, that make up that, um, that area. It's gonna add a little bit of a gap. Maybe even push it like so. Um, and also, I'm gonna go ahead and use these to add a, an extra level of detail just by tagging this 
uh, we can go ahead and hold control or sorry make sure that we have QMesh click and drag hold control and that will extract that piece uh, this is something that I use uh, all the time with I'm using the simulacy if I want to create a new piece it's kind of like a, an extract fun function um, using the masking brushes like the extract um, from the sub tool palette but just with the simulator you can just extract a piece and then just work on that piece Oops, like that something like this this is just gonna be uh, a, a very thin base that we can use with I don't know maybe a different material and then we can split this actually split hidden and we can work on this separately something like that hold control and I'm just using this because I know that um, some guitars have this thing might not might not be a thing but this is gonna be two pieces on each side and that could be a different a different material Right, so this is the same the same tool yep but what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna add a new edge loop so insert closer to the border here and if I want to add uh, this is a cool thing actually if I want to add another edge loop let's say closer to the border but I'm using this um, this subtool that has three independent geometries so there's no continuity in the topology and I want to have a, you know a, a, an edge loop that goes across all of them in other words let me just show you the kind of like the not great way to do it I can do this and then try to match whoops the same thing on this one and then on this one right and then I can hold control uh, invert the mask bring the mask and flatten those but you can simply use something like this slice curve so let's go to slice curve and do that just slice maybe not that close like that and that would create polygroups and a slice through the entire topology and I can only work on or I don't have to work on both sides at the same time and this brush doesn't work uh, with symmetry so I can just work on the positive or the negative and click and mirror and weld and now this works a little bit better so that's kind of like what I wanted I feel like we might need to add one more so let's go back to the slice oops slice curve something like that you can press the uh, the shift key by the way to snap to different um, angles and hold this space bar to move that line um, around so it's gonna add a couple more here just to sharpen those those lines uh, you can also use creasing if you want but that's really that's really all I wanted okay let's do a quick save and now we can start working on this on this thing Uh, and I hope I can see. I uh, hope I can show you a couple more things. Scale this in the x-axis. Actually, I think this is fine. Um, I might want to sharpen this a bit more, actually. So we can use the bevel. Just bevel this. Whoops. Bevel that, and then Sirius will remember the settings. So it's going to be exactly the same on this side. I'm gonna bevel that as well and now whoops something happened there let's undo all of that let's see where the where we went wrong hmm, 
that's interesting. All right, don't know why it's doing that, but we can slide as well. This to the edge. And then just add a new one. I just want to sharpen the corners of this piece. Perfect. And I kind of like the, the roundness of it. Um, we could potentially use the slice to add another one right in the middle. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and bring this one closer now. So this is gonna sit here on top of it. Make sure it covers that entire length. All right, um, and now we can start working on the on the subdivision or the the dynamic subdivision and, and sharpening all of those edges. Um, hey, Paulo. Hey, Jake. How you doing? No worries, man. Glad that you like the community. That's awesome. Hey, Renzo. All right, cool. So let's have a look. So now we can just, you know, bring the, the rest of these pieces to the same level. So I might just turn this off. Yeah, so that we can work on just the, the bridge. Um, so now that we have that piece, I'm gonna select this one. And I just wanna, just want to think about this a little bit um, because if I if I sharpen these edges, let's go crease. Ah, oh, this is this is annoying. Okay, I'm I'm gonna try to <laughs> do it from here, but basically uh, you can actually crease this. It just need to be there. There. Um, this is a, an interesting thing. I don't know if you knew about this, but uh, you see that I can crease either this edge loop or it will just crease this other one. And that is basically, I'm going to undo that. Um, there. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but if you hover over the, the white line or the edge, right? And if you move it around slightly, you see that it changes the selection. So if you wanna, if I wanna do the creasing around this one, I need to make sure that the highlight is something else. It's kind of like not intuitive, but it's uh, the way it works. So that way I can just create that. Um, yeah, the creasing all around this edge loop or this poly group. Um, that's one way to do it. Other way to do it would be since we have clean topology or, or clean polygroups is from the polygroup or the polygroup uh, creasing sorry from the creasing tab here you can click on uh, crease pg or polygroups and that's going to crease all the the groups uh, all the borders so now this is what we have but we need to also crease these ones right so now we have this clean mesh getting subdivided a couple more times or maybe one more time for subdivision level um, so that's that's the, the bridge uh, right there, that is pretty clean. Uh, but I wanna make this uh, in an angle. So that's the other thing I wanted to do. So I'm gonna control, hold control, invert that, centered, and then just push this back. Like that. And I'm gonna mask these ones and, oops. And then just push the the point right in the middle slightly. All right, so hopefully now you can see where I'm going with this. Uh, maybe we can stretch it a bit more. Usually a little bit bigger than the uh, than the rest on the bridge. I don't know if the, the entire thing is called the bridge, but it might be just the the thing with with them 
where the strings are resting. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Let's do the same thing. It is also a pretty clean geometry, so let's crease polygroups. Crease these ones as well. Yep, and turn on dynamic. So this one is going to be rounded anyway. It's not like perfectly rounded. It's actually a bit flatter, to be honest. It's going to be, it's going to like that. And then we can take this point and just hide it in there. Same thing as this one. Right? Um, and then we just need to add that that piece that I don't know the name that goes right in the middle or almost in the middle. Um, so for that we can actually use let's let's think about it. Um, if I go into solo mode, it can come from here from this point, but um, you actually see it from the from from the from the side you can actually see it. So uh, what I can do is add. Let's go ahead and delete these polygroups. So right click, delete, select that and delete that. So it's empty. And what I'll do is add another edge loop here, insert. And it's gonna be kind of like that. And I'm gonna add another one here. Let's see if what I'm thinking is gonna pay off or not. I'll tell you <laughs> in a second. Okay, um, basically, and, and this is something that, um, you know, I do all the time is like, even if you have something that looks clean and it's ready to go, uh, sometimes you, you can just be a, a little bit afraid of, oh, this is already looking pretty good. I'm, I'm not gonna touch it or uh, I don't wanna do anything like that. Like. To, to ruin it, but it is when you're designing these type of things and you're following like a reference, if anything, um, it is a super organic process. So if you find yourself that, you know, you need to do something with a piece, you can duplicate it in case you don't, um, you know, you don't get it right the first time uh, and you have that backup, but don't be afraid of just try different things and, and change the topology and change, you know, uh, even turn this into a dynamic and give it some more um, organic shape and then re-remesh and all of that. So um, the, the C modeler and the C remesher are not necessarily, I mean, I use them to produce a clean mesh, a clean base mesh, but they also sketching tools. So you can just use this type of thing um, to sketch while maintaining a clean topology all the way through the sketching process, if that makes sense. So all I wanted to do here was add a couple more edge loops so that I can do this that I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna bridge this with this, this with this, and then this quad as well, right? So that's that's all I wanted to do. Um, and the reason I did that is so that I can select this area and kind of like ex um, intrude it <laughs> a little bit. So do, do like, um, yeah, so select these points here. It's gonna make more sense when I actually do it. And I'm gonna inset the entire region like that. Think that would work, and I'm gonna deal, I'm gonna push this one down. So I'm gonna tag this. And, oops, you select the Q mesh. Hmm. So this is what I wanted to do, but there's some points here. Hmm. Let's undo that. I'm gonna actually delete it just uh, to keep it again clean. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so I'm gonna right click on this edge, the stone of symmetry, and I'm gonna bridge this one with that one, right? And then we can just insert multi edge loops and create one in the middle. Um, if you use the multi edge loops and you don't click and drag, and you just simply click once, series is going to create the edge loop right in the middle of you know the the proportion that you have and then we can just select bridge go back to symmetry and then just bridge this 
So as you see, this there's, there's tons of different ways to, to do the same thing. Um, great. So now, I don't know why I have, I'm gonna clear, uh, increase all. Let's do a quick save just in case. And I'm gonna mask this one. Invert the mask center, oops, center. Yeah, I'm just gonna push it like so. Just try to make it a bit straight. Yeah. All right, so now we can take this, right? And do the same thing that I did for the other piece here on the side. Just click and drag, whoops, make sure you have Q mesh. Click and drag, hold control, and that will extrude that piece. And then I just extrude that like so. Mask that area. Actually, we can split this one. Whoops, split it and then we're gonna merge all the bridge together anyway, but we can work separately. Split hidden. And let's center that. Mm, this actually is not straight. So um, just a quick way to to straighten this up is let's go to solo mode. I'm just gonna hide this part, delete hidden, bring in the gizmo, centered, and then I'm gonna flatten it on the Z axis. So now this is completely flat, and we can bring in the, the C modeler again, right click, Q mesh, push this down. I'm just gonna double check, yep, the I, because I extruded in the kind of like inwards, I just flipped the normal. So I'm just gonna flip them again. Okay, so now that's that's straight. All right. So that's kind of like the piece embedded in the And now we can take this one and work on. Uh, you know, adjusting this, uh, but we can do that with the dynamics of the vision anyway. Just want to do it very quickly using the move brush, and we can change the axis of the infinite depth. So, with those points here, uh, you guys cannot see that actually. Hang on. So, right now it's on the z axis. I can click on these little letters and then just change it to this um, x axis, and I can do this. And I know for sure that it's uh, doing it on the you know, all all across. Let's push this down. Maybe this is just a chance to to give it more of a curvature here. Cool. All right. So that took a while. <laughs> All right. So let's work on the dynamic and see what we need to crease, what edges we need to add, or edge loops. So for sure, we're going to have to add a couple here towards the um, edge or or not. Let's see. Insert edge loop. I'm going to click and drag. Add one there and one closer. Now enable dynamic. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna sharpen the the bottom edge by creasing it. Sometimes it's just easier to crease based. Uh, hang on. This is what I was talking about before. There, and it's also creasing this, which I was planning to do it anyway. So that's cool.
All right, let's try this out now. Pretty neat, okay. Um, you can also add a couple of edge loops here just to sharpen that line. I'm gonna do that as well. Insert single edge loop, click and drag, whoops. Make sure I'm, I'm doing it correctly, something like that. There we go. And to sharpen this corner as well, we can do the same thing. Just add another one there. And that sharpens things up nicely. All right, so that's coming along. Uh, I'll check the chat in just a second, guys. I just wanna take this piece. And this also has like a, a very, very minor, slightly uh, curvature. I don't know if it's uh, if it is a standard thing. Mine has it. So I'm gonna insert an edge loop like there, and then mask this point, push it up, and the same thing here. So it's not it's not perfectly rounded. It's just more of a Kind of like a gap. Hang on. Hopefully this is going to gonna make sense. Um, let's add an, an insert. Just uh, oops. Uh, loop around there, and then another one closer. There we go. And let's use dynamic. And I reckon we can actually crease this because it's pretty sharp anyway. So let's crease um, edge loop complete. And here at the bottom as well. Yeah, it's kind of like that. This edge is actually sharper in mine. Don't know. I mean, it's all right. We can bevel it, if anything. Nah. I think it's fine. I'm just going to add one more loop closer to it. Yeah, something like that. Cool. Now I'm just gonna fix the height of it. And again, just using the move brush with the infinite depth in the X axis, I can go ahead and move these points. Let's move to this one. Just bring them closer. All right, so that's, uh, I, hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if it is a standard thing in, in, in classical guitars, but there you go. All right, now for this one, hang on, is this dynamic? There we go. Uh, this one, we haven't done anything for this piece in terms of making it dynamic or not. Um, this one is pretty pretty straightforward, so I'm just gonna go use dynamic and do you guys can see this? Yes, so I can add a couple of Q grids and that's just gonna sharpen that and maybe we can add an edge loop. So insert single edge loop. Whoops. So I'm just using the the Q grid to to get a more of a box type of shape. Right? Uh, but we can also use, you know, just simple edge loops and then play with the coverage. Let's do it without polygroup so you can see polyframe. Uh, so you see this is pretty sharp, but we can just work with that coverage and let's change between bevel and chamfer. So chamfer is gonna be more like smooth, the transition. So I just wanna get a little bit of that bevel 
Bitcoin. And again, it's, this is all dynamic. So that's pretty cool. Let's select this one. All right. Now, the, the tricky thing here now is that all of these pieces have different settings in the dynamics of division or the dynamic yeah, dynamics of division. So uh, if we would combine all of this, what's going to happen is that it's going to use the, I think it's the, um, the first subtool selected, or the, 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 the subtool selected at the top is going to um, override all the settings for the rest of them. So we can keep it separate. We can apply the subdivision so that we can maintain the shape of all of these. Uh, so there's different ways to go about it. Um, I'm just gonna keep them. Let's go. Let's go ahead and do a quick save. I want to keep them in a in a folder so that it's gonna be easy to move around as well. And then we decide what to do. So uh, let's click on folder. Let's call this bridge. Drop all of these in there. And now let's place this over the guitar because we might have to tweak the, the size, of course. Um, hey, Paolo, I'm curious when you make the strings winning for it. Oh, the strings. Um, yeah, the strings would be an, an, another interesting one. Yeah, we have time for that as well. Um, the, the, um, the fret thing, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. The, the, so the fret thing is actually, I, I'm hoping to, to have it um, ready in just a, a few minutes and then we can do the strings for sure. Um, the, the one that would take the most, like the, 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 the you know, most time to, to model and to create is the, the tuning pegs, but the rest should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to, um, now that I have the, the bridge in a folder, what I can do is just click on the cog icon, click on transpose set, and that automatically is gonna um, select those those pieces, and then I can just place them very easily. So it's something around there, of course, smaller. Actually, let's put it closer to this, to the neck of the guitar, because the, the bridge is roughly the same width or like this part anyway. And then we can just bring it down. That looks, that looks all right. Um, let's move it closer. Yeah. Now, I'm just thinking that I think it looks all right. Cool. So again, another quick save. I'm getting paranoid about it. Uh, but all in all, this is pretty low res anyway. So we have a pretty low res guitar. Um, so how are we going to do the, oh, okay, the, the fret. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, don't have any more water. Give me two seconds. I'll be back. I'm just going to have a drink of water and I'll be back.
All right. So just wanted to show you the, the thing that we've been working on. Um, hang on, are we back? Yep. So those pieces, all of those pieces and all those lines that I made, all those extra geometry, it's basically for this piece I found there because I don't have the thing to share. So see how so that's the bridge. Hopefully you can see there in the camera. Um, but once that's done, um, we can work on the thread. So just trying to think what else we're missing. It's all good. All right. So let's do let's do the frets and then we do the strings. So for the frets, the, there's again many different ways to do it. If you have a reference or you're sort of tracing on top of it, um, you can just do you can just do um, a slicing. Uh, for example, uh, again I'm just thinking of dif different ways because there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. So um, what I'll do, let me just show you a simple way. And then I'll show you something else. Um, I'm gonna duplicate the the neck of the guitar. Go into solo mode. Turn off dynamic. I'm just gonna simplify this one. So I'm gonna use the C modeler. Actually, we could just hold Control and Shift to select this polygroup and delete hidden. Yep. So. That's fine. And then I'm just going to use the C modeler to delete some of these um, edge loops. So ultimately, what we have or what we're going to end up with. Is just a simple plane, but that matches the the one that we did before. So that's that's pretty much all we need just to do this this method. All right. So this is basically what I would do. Um, let me just find um, a reference. All right. So what I'll do is I'm going to import this as a, as a purely as a reference to place those set it to the spotlight. I'm going to turn on off the opacity and I'm going to try to match this. Again, I'm, I haven't been using reference, so it might not match exactly. Oh, look at that. It's not too bad. <laughs> All right, roughly, right? Let's turn the opacity even lower. Right, so now I have the, the spotlight. I'm going to lock the, the camera. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift, bring in this slice curve. And all I'm going to do is slice through wherever there is a, a thread. And, and that's going to give me distance if you want to do it like super accurate based on the reference. So holding Control and Shift, and then just place uh, using this the space to do that. 
So I'm going to create polygroups for all of that. And if you have a, you know, a, a better reference, <laughs> then you can do this a bit more accurate and just see exactly where these are placed. I'm just going to go a little bit faster because this is just one of the many ways of producing this. And remember, the, I chose this asset to show you a bunch of techniques. I'm not necessarily, I'm not choosing the the fastest method or, or the best method. Um, Again, for these, I'm actually going to move these points. There. Um, yeah, so there's, there's going to be heaps of other ways to do it. And if I'm, <clears throat> if I were to build this for, you know, w while working and, and I need to create this asset, I might just use, you know, different methods and I, or some of the ones that I show you, but I'll do it um, a lot faster. Uh, because I'm not thinking about what else to show you. So this is the only reason I'm, I'm choosing this object. But that's it, right? Um, so now we know for sure these are kind of like place um, nicely. And what we can do now is, let's just duplicate that. That's kind of like a nice reference, for, at least for the proportion. Uh, so we have that. We can go back to the Simula, right? We have all of these divisions exactly where we want them. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on bevel, right? And I'm going to, what I'll do is just click and drag just enough to create that thickness of that thread. I'm going to hold the alt key. Should give me a different polygroup. All right. Let's just do it like that. And remember that, remember that Sirius will remember <laughs> the 1st of November. No, so the um, Sirius will remember the settings. So you can just basically click through all of those just to add that bevel and the thickness of that thread is going to be consistent all the way through. Oh, this one. I'm going to delete. Oh, I don't know. Ah, oh, because I did, um, hmm. Never mind. Let's do this. Let's do this um, manually. I'm gonna push it down a bit. Let's do another in there, roughly. All right. So that's pretty cool. Smooth, move brush. Um, strings, yeah, no worries. All right, so now that we have these, again, you can duplicate it and keep it in the originals. Um, all I want really from this is just those those subdivisions, so or those um, splitting of those edges. So I'm gonna hold Control and Shift, and I'm gonna hide anything that I don't need. It's gonna be a little bit annoying because I don't have enough geometry. Okay, uh, I I guess in this case the easiest way actually would be to just hold the Alt key hold with the the C modular and just tag all of these things that we don't need, and we're gonna get rid of that. Just right click, delete. Cool. So now we have those pieces that we can just simply um, group visible, right? And we can just get closer. Oh, I have a feeling that I must have clicked. Hmm. Must have done something. No, it's fine. It has just a weird artifact in there. All right, I'm going to group visible, right click with the Q mesh, polygroup all, and I'm going to click and drag. And that's just going to give me the same uh, thickness for all of those pieces. So I'm just going to go for something like that. 
right? And of course, we can use dynamic subdivision. And we wanna, if we wanna add an additional um, edge loop in this case, because again, we have separate geometry, we can use the same technique I showed you before using the slice curve. So let's bring in the rest of the guitar. Actually, all right. <laughs> I was working on the other axis. I'm gonna push this forward right about there. Maybe scale it a bit. Something like that. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift, click and drag. And again, I'm going to do it on this side because the other side, um, this is not a tool that works with symmetry, so I'm going to try to get them all there. So now we have this edge loop closer to the to the border, mirror and weld, and that's it, really. We can use dynamic now. We might need an extra one, so let's go ahead and do that. Hold Control and Shift. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. Mirror and well. Um, I feel like some of these ones are not necessarily touching the the border, but it's because the uh, remember the one that we use as a reference to build those frets are um, was not with subdivision level or with dynamic subdivision, sorry. And the one that we have here, the the proper one has already dynamic. So what we can do is enable dynamic now for these pieces, and we can use the move brush. Go back to our infinite depth, and we can start, you know, adjusting this with symmetry. Mm. One thing, though, is that. I feel like this would work. I mean, it's uh, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, as is as in like a rounded shape. Could even subdivide it one more time. But I feel that if I just hide these bits, hang on. Let me think about it. What would be the fastest route? Okay, so if I select that and I'll crease polygroups, polygroups, uh, crease polygroups, and change dynamic. Nope, that's not going to work. Let's use the polygroup by normal because this one is a pretty flat thing. And then we can go ahead and hide all the center pieces. So using the whole control and shift, we hide all of those almost. Hang on. <laughs> all I want to do is be able to have like different polygroups for the edges. So uh, another way to do it that's probably going to be faster is to let's assign a polygroup to everything go to the side and because we have like this pretty you know pretty straight object uh, what I'll do is group front so this one is gonna group let's do a couple of them it's gonna group front hmm we can change maybe the the angle group visible group front We might have to do this manually then, because it's not giving me what I need. Hmm. I'm just thinking, what what else could we do? 
Ah, uh, you know what? There is a thing here in the poly paint, I think it is. Yeah, poly paint, um, which is masked by draft, and this is probably more accurate because it's for 3D printing. So if we mask by draft or poly paint, don't know if this is gonna be the the right thing. Nope. All right. <laughs> let's just let's just keep it very simple. I'm gonna go ahead and use the select lasso or hold control and shift hide all of these pieces right and because I only want the borders uh, we can go to visibility oh yeah visibility here and we can shrink that selection that's probably the easiest one uh, now we can group visible and now we have this you know perfectly aligned in terms of polygrouping and now we can do use the crease by polygroups yes that's what I wanted so sharpen line in there perfect uh, so now we can use the move brush or we can use actually the gizmo to tweak the, the thickness of this. So this is something that I'll probably do afterwards because it's gonna take a, a bit of time. But I just want I wanna show you how I would go about it. Um that's again you can do it like that uh, another way to do it if you want to you know speed up this process a little bit of just tweaking these things is to actually scale this a little bit just so that you go over over the uh, the neck of the guitar right and then you can use instead of the slice curve you can use the clip brush and the clip brush is gonna it's not gonna cut or it's not gonna slice the geometry it's just gonna take whatever is on the shaded side of the curve and it's gonna flatten it towards the um, yeah whatever you're using so let me show you so I'm gonna try to target the edge of the of the neck of the guitar kind of like that let go right kind of kind of can move it there and we can simply do a mirror and weld but before I do that let me fix that one because this is something didn't get um, didn't get the right polygrouping so using the C modeler Edge. There we go. And holding the control key to mask that area, center it, and we can push this, this back. And I feel I might have to just move these ones down anyway, slightly. Oops. Okay, so now we can go ahead and mirror and weld and that would give us the rest of them. Um, again, this is something that we can tweak later on, but roughly, roughly speaking, that that should give us something decent that um, you know is clean and and give us exactly the same um, 
or the, the proper length and the amount of frets of the guitar. So let's do a quick save. We have about 15 minutes just to show you another way to go about this process and uh, to start the, the strings. I mean, the strings, there's, there's many ways to do it as well. Uh, what does it mean to mask by draft? Um, that is That has to do with 3D printing. So basically, if you have, uh, let's say, if you have, let's just make a cube. Um, I, we can we can talk about this in the in the next Q and A of the extra mile, uh, Pablo, if you want, in more depth, but just roughly. If you have something like this and you're gonna three D print it, um, if you go ahead and set it from this angle and go to mass by draft. Oh, this doesn't have enough geometry. Let's do a couple of them. Mass by draft. Um, this mask is basically um, whatever is going to be occluded by the, um, by the printing axis. So this is kind of like where you're going to have your um, your supports in a way. Where is the floor? Yeah. Let's set um, set direction mask by draft. Right. So if you were to print this exactly like this, you see it's only the, the mask areas. You don't see it from the top. So, and if you go to the bottom, everything is masked. So basically from this point, all of this is kind of like your your supports in a way. So you know exactly what. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, it's um, it's a pretty specific thing. Um, okay, so the other tool that I would use to, to create these frets um, would be obviously the array mesh. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna hide, oops, hide everything but the first one, delete hidden. Uh, we can turn off dynamic for the time being. And I'm gonna go to array mesh and I'm gonna click on Array Mesh, and that's gonna be, um, this is a feature that I don't use often uh, because most of my most of my work is more organic and uh, I rarely find a use for it. But for example, I, when I use it quite a bit is to create uh, patterns or like tileable patterns that I can use then in Nano Mesh. So the Array Mesh allows me to visualize the kind of like the connection of those tiling patterns and then I can cut a piece and convert it into an animesh. Uh, but in this case, it's pretty useful. I'm gonna increase the amount of repetition or the amount of arrays. And I'm gonna go ahead and offset it in the Z axis. So I'm gonna click on that. My offset, oops, not that one. Hang on, floor, oh, sorry, in the Y axis. So I'm gonna push that down. All right, let's bring in the the reference again. Roughly there, log the camera. Um, so how many do we have, hang on. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's go for 19 then. So 19 of these frets, right? Um, but they're all using the array mesh, it's it's pretty consistent, right? So the distance is, is super consistent. So what we can do is use this amount, you know, to, to stretch it out like that. Um, or we can use the transpose line Right, and if we enable transpose line, we can bring that. This is the transpose line. I'm gonna click and drag from this point to this one right here. So you see, it just centers that line, and then we can take this and oops, not uh, scale it, move it actually, holding shift, and then I'm gonna move it all the way like that. But the problem is with this. 
is that it's going to be pretty consistent. So what we actually need to do is change the the spacing, the proportion, the spacing between each thread. So we can do that with the profile. So because we're using it to extend this array in the y-axis, we can take this and you see it's pretty linear. But if we do this, we just basically change that that kind of like ratio in a way. So let's just try to find something that kind of works. And this is just moving a profile basically. Let's turn this off for a second. This one is a little bit tricky. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I'm doing it from, hang on. Let's reset that. Let's do it from here. So we're gonna need 20. So we have a better reference. Okay, it's roughly something like that, but you see it's not perfect. Um, and this is also because the, the profile is is also kind of like a curvature. So we can try to sharpen this by clicking on the point, take it out and bring it back. So now we have a more like a sharper change in, in this. Yeah, but working on these ones, um, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. But at least you get like that instant instant feedback. All right, so that was just another way. <laughs> um, of course, once you uh, like, if you're happy with the position, you can just go ahead and make it into mesh, and then adjust anything that wasn't, you know, that wasn't right. Like this one, invert, bring in the gizmo, push it back, push it up. So that's gonna take a little while, but. It's just another way to get you started with something. And adjust the placement of those. So I'm not going to go through all of those because it's just to show you something else and I want to show you the uh, the strings. Uh, but that's another way to do it. Um, something else you can do is hide all of this. Did it hidden? is using, uh, if you want something consistent, you can use the, the gizmo as well. So I'm gonna hold Alt and just reset the pivot here. And if I hold Control and Shift, let's just position this a little bit better. So if I hold Control, uh, sorry, not Control and Shift, if I hold Control on the gizmo and click and drag, obviously I'm duplicating that mesh, right? But so if I go to this point, Right, and I hold and I release the control. It's just gonna give me a duplicate of that consistently. So that's one another way to do it. Um, but the simple kind of like manual way in this case would be just to hold control, drop it in there, hold control, hold control. So just duplicating within the same subtool like that. So this might be a, you know, a better way to do um, what we did with the slice curve before, just because you can work on a single one of these, make it um, make it work in the way that you want to, um, the shape and everything, like I just did there, and right, and then you can just uh, duplicate it and and so on and so forth. But anyway, let's drop that one in there. Cool. 
So anyway, again, just to show you different ways. Um, for the string, we have about seven minutes though. So uh, for the string, in this case, I would use something like the C spheres, uh, just because there are there are two different ways to wrap around the string um, at the bottom. So I'll have to create two different ones. Um, yeah. So I, I, it's different from an acoustic from uh, sorry an acoustic. Then okay, this one is not. <laughs> but um yeah, they they wrap around in, in a different way. So um, we can use. Let's 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 just. I'm gonna show you a couple of things actually. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and create or append something a cube, whatever it is, and I'm gonna turn it into a Q cube. And I'm just gonna give it a red color, just so I know that this is just a dummy file. I'm gonna put it out over there. So this is just a cube, so that I can insert things. I will delete it afterwards. Um, but what we can do is go to the curve tubes. Right, and in this stroke palette. So this is what what we get if we use these uh, tubes. I'm gonna use something larger so you can see it. Right, uh, I would use something like this to do the strings, but there are a few different things. So we can go ahead and take um, this curve and check on the as line. So the as line is going to just allow you to create a straight line, right? So I'm going to create one a straight line maybe from this point, right? You see the the line is pretty straight. Hold shift. Oh, well, shift in this case is not snapping, but it should. And just go all the way through here. So that's the that's the curve, and of course it is super thick, but we can right click, go to one update the curve and now that's that's the string right let's accept that and because we have it in a kind of like in a separate mesh let's go ahead and delete that delete that whoops yep all right um, solo mode clear that mask I'm gonna hold control and shift delete hidden Hang on, need to delete that one. And that's obviously that's just one. Um, and the, the thickness of the of the strings are not consistent, but uh, I mean they're different, so I'll show you how to do that in a second. So let's put that one around there. And in fact, let's hold control, sorry, alt and reset the, the pivot around there. And we can go ahead and rotate this one in a bit. Oh, this is a cool thing that um, it, it's not a trick or something. It's just more like a, a workflow tip if you want. Um, if you put like a pivot in there, I don't know if it's very easy to see that the string. Can you see the string? <laughs> Let me just change the the material. Yep. So if you start, if you put the pivot here and you start rotating, it's gonna be a little bit hard to to snap um, this where you want it, right? So one thing you can do is just click to start rotating, but then stand your mouse kind of like towards the top and then you sort of like have more control of it. Okay, something, something like that. This is it's actually closer to this. Uh, but then you can hold control and let's do that one two three four five six clear and adjust this of course it, it, this is not not perfect um, I, I, like I said I'm gonna do it with the the C spheres but this is just a quick way to generate something um, that could work and then what you can do is... Obviously, yeah, the the distance is not perfect, uh, but you can go ahead and sort of auto group, right? And then you can say, okay, this one is gonna be the thick thicker one. So 
mask that and then you can use the inflate to just give it a bit more thickness right and vice versa you can just take this one invert and deflate it a tiny bit All right so that's how you can create the different thickness um, so this is a pretty cool and easy way to do it the way that I would do it and probably we'll leave that one for the next the next stream and, and connect it to the tuning pegs would be let's just leave that one in there uh, appending a C sphere I'm gonna move that C sphere and scale it it's gonna be pretty pretty tiny so we can use the C sphere to either generate the actual geometry that we're gonna use for the string or kind of like a path to to wrap around a more consistent um, thing which is what I'll do <laughs> so basically I'm gonna go ahead and hold the uh, with the draw mode I'm gonna click and drag and if I hold shift series is going to respect or maintain the the size of this of the C sphere so now I'm gonna put this one there actually let's make this smaller so we can wrap it around so this is a process that might take a while but it it's gonna be worth it okay so here is our C sphere I'm gonna just leave it there actually let's put it here and then maybe there and then I can use the draw to just click and add kind of like in-betweens so this one is gonna be there this one is gonna end up in the at the end this one is gonna be wrapped around again I'm just have I'm gonna have to look at the the reference of and on how this thing is actually wrapped but this allows me to have a lot of control about like how to yeah how to wrap it around this all right let's leave it uh, I see this right now and then I can take this one push it all the way up I'm gonna have to create like in betweens So something like that. All right, and then obviously we can move it. Um, we can move it around, but uh, basically that's gonna be one. And we can place it a bit better. So let's say this one is around there. This one goes here. And like I said, we might have to add a few more because this is going to give us a, a weird topology. But uh, roughly, now if we go to the adaptive skin, make sure this is set to zero, then set it to one, and we do a preview. This is what we get, right? A pretty clean topology that goes all around. And, and if we spend time wrapping it around, it's going to be well, um, yeah, well wrapped in a way. But um, I'll go over this technique in the next stream and, and how to wrap it properly and, you know, connect it here to the, to the tuning pegs and all of that. Um, so that's just with a C-sphere. I'm going to turn this off so that I remember that it's a C-sphere. Let's call it um, string base. And we do that next, next stream. So quick save. All right. So that's it for today's guy for today, guys. So eleven, yeah. So we have to to wrap it up there. Uh, let's see if there's some last minute last minute questions. 
that I could answer. Um, like a projection from the camera. Yeah, exactly. Great tip for the rotation. Cool. Um, would you use the C spheres to create a shoelace as well? Yeah, definitely. Anything that is is kind of like that. That's the that's what I would do. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have any other questions. Otherwise, we'll we'll leave it there. All right. Cool. All right. No worries, guys. So um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here, and next time we'll we'll finish up the, the strings. I reckon next time is uh, like the next session. We'll have plenty of time to just uh, complete this guitar and, and call it a day. All right. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you next week. Uh, by the way, if if you're interested uh, in the in the extra mile, the the course that I have online. Um, I'm hoping for October, so keep an eye on your email. The end of October, hopefully, um, because I also have the the Ultimate Seabrush Guide course um, coming up. So I'm I'm just gonna think a way of not clashing between those two. But if you're interested, that's gonna be coming up soon. I hope in October. All right, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.